Hey, it's Andre, and if you've got yourself a brand new Sony ZV-10 and you're thinking of getting yourself some accessories that are hopefully going to help you get the best out of your camera, then I'm going to show you my top 10 accessories with the first five accessories, definite must-haves, and the last five accessories, ones that will be useful to have. The first thing on the list is definitely the smallest one, and it's a memory card. ZV-10 is compatible with Sony Memory Stick Duo cards and the familiar SD cards. While you can use any SD card you want to take just pictures, a camera like the ZV-10 can obviously do much more than that. If you want to shoot high quality videos in HD or 4K, then you'll need an SDHC or an SDXC card, which provide increased data capacity and quicker data speeds compared to the standard SD card. And if you get one of these quicker SD cards, like the SanDisk 128GB Micro SDXC card, which fits into this adapter, then you'll definitely be future-proofing yourself if you end up upgrading your camera in the future. Next is spare batteries. While the battery capacity of the standard Sony MPFW50 battery isn't the best, and in fact it's rated at being able to take about 440 still images or 80 minutes of video shooting. So if you're a power user, you could be out all day on a shoot, then you can easily get through a full charge in no time. That's why it's good to have spare batteries. And while there are loads of third party brands in the market who claim to have near or better battery capacity compared to the Sony battery, I've always felt their performance to be a little inconsistent. So I've got another one of these Sony batteries and two third party batteries, which I'll turn to if my Sony spare runs out of juice. Some third party batteries also come with a charger, either as a single charger or a dual charger like this, usually with notifiers telling you the progress of the charge. So I definitely recommend getting a charger as well. So when you've made your first battery change, the original battery can be charging and you've still got a third backup if you need it. Staying on batteries, if you film long indoor sessions or you're using your camera as a streaming camera, then you should definitely have a dummy battery. This looks and fits just like a normal battery, but the difference is it also has a lead attached to it and is powered into the mains, giving you unlimited power to your camera. So that means that you're not relying on those spare batteries and you can also save them for your outdoor shoot. Next is an external flash. If you've got the ZV-10, then you'll probably have noticed that it doesn't have a flash on board like other cameras like the Sony E5000 does. And if you're watching this video and you've got another camera at disposal and it does have a built-in flash that isn't the best, but still has a hot shield on top allowing you to add accessories, then getting an external flash like this Godox TT350S is gonna widen the type and variety of shots that you can get, or because you're able to give your scene so much more light. With something that just fits on top of your camera, just like that. And as an upgrade to this setup, if your camera is compatible, you can also get a wireless flash trigger like this one, also from Godox, that works with the external flash, but instead of having the flash attached to your camera, you can have it anywhere else. Useful for those portrait shots and for anything that you just want more control over the direction of the light source. Because as you know, if you've got the flash attached to your camera, then front on is the only direction that you're gonna able to get light from the flash hitting your subject, which can be somewhat limiting. But with this wireless flash trigger, I can get light coming from here, here, and anywhere else. If you intend to vlog with your ZV-10, then you're gonna to wanna to purchase an external microphone because in conditions other than perfect, you often find that the onboard microphone, even with the windscreen attached, doesn't always portray your voice how you want it to be portrayed. So having an external microphone like this Movo VXR10 microphone, which is directional, only needs to be plugged into the camera's microphone slot, has a budget value, and a windscreen to make your ZV-10 look like a proper vlogging camera. Same with the vlogging theme, holding a camera out like this just isn't practical. It can sometimes be unsafe. So you're gonna want something that's gonna make it a lot easier for you to hold the camera out in front of you. Is it gonna give you a bit more room to get yourself in frame? Useful if your lens isn't wide enough to get everything in. And obviously it's gonna be safer to hold your camera. So that's where this mini tripod comes in. And you can even place it down on the side if you're doing your B-roll, and even as a quick place, point and shoot tripod for your photography shots. This mini tripod from Manfrotto is another must have. I think it was one of the first accessories that I got when I had my A5000. It aesthetically looks apart, feels comfortable to hold, and it's easily adjustable by pressing this button and then letting it go locks it in place. That was my five essential accessories for the ZV-10. 
These next five are the useful ones that would also help. Some will further aid your shots and some will have focus on protection. And let's talk about one of those first. The LCD screen on any camera or phone is usually the first thing on your device that's gonna be prone to scratches. So why not protect it with a cheap tempered glass screen protector that's not only easy to apply, it's also gonna protect your precious camera screen. The next one is extension tubes. I love these because they not only allow you to get closer to your subject and start to explore macro for photography if attached to the appropriate lens like the kit lens but it also means that you're not having to spend loads of money on a dedicated macro lens. Consider these as a money saving option as well as a practical one. Everyone talks about filters, that's why they're on this list. For me, not vitally essential, but very useful. I use either an ND filter, in particular variable ND filters like these ones, which essentially allow you to vary the amount of light coming into the lens by simply rotating the filter between its minimum and maximum points without ever affecting the color, sharpness, or contrast of your shot. But I also use a UV filter, less so compared to the ND filter, but this one does exactly what it says on the tin. It reduces the amount of UV light or ultraviolet light hitting your camera sensor. As well as those practical reasons, there are also protective reasons to use filters on any lens. And that is that they act as a protective shield by protecting your expensive lens from dust and dirt. I want you to ask yourself, would you rather your inexpensive filter be scratched or damaged from a drop or your lens? If you do have multiple lenses, then buying multiple filters can start to become expensive. Then why not use step up and step down rings? These act as filter size converters that are a smaller or larger filter to fit on a smaller or larger lens with a different filter size. I've got this 49 millimeter ND filter that fits on both my 55 to 210 millimeter and 35 millimeter lenses, but not on the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens, which has a filter size of 40.5 millimeters. So you can see a problem there. So with this 40.5 to 49 millimeter step down ring, I can fix it to the kit lens and now it becomes compatible with the 49 millimeter ND filter. The last accessory is important, but it's not in my top five because of the expense, and that's lenses. For a long time, I only had my 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens, and I was mostly happy and content with the shots that I got. But you get to a stage where you want to take your photography to the next level, and you feel like you're being hampered by the equipment. Some people blame the camera, but it's usually the lens that is the culprit. But as we know, lenses can be expensive, and depending on the type of photography that you take, will ultimately push you into the direction of the types of lenses that would best serve your skills. For me, I have the Sony 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens, a newer 35 millimeter f1.7 manual lens, a Sony 55 to 210 millimeter lens, and my newest lens, the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4 lens, which until I got this, I didn't realize how hampered you are compared to primarily using something like the kit lens, which don't get me wrong, isn't a bad lens, but compared to a premium lens like this, the quality is almost night and day. I'll give you a glimpse into my wild card, that one extra accessory, and that's this gimbal. This is the Zion Crane M2S gimbal, and when I attach it to my Sony ZV-10, not only does it become a sort of tripod, but if you've not seen one of these before, its main objective is to reduce that shakiness that you find with handheld footage by giving you a smoother finished product when filming things like tracking shots before you even upload the footage for editing. But these can be expensive, and that's why it's my wild card. So that's a look into the what I think is the essential, the useful, and the wildcard accessories. Not only for your ZV-10, but for any camera that you're using. I'll put all of the links to everything you've seen in this video in the description below, and any videos that I have done reviews on also down there too. And if there's any essential, useful, or wildcard accessories that you use, just let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, press that like button if you like this video, and subscribe if you haven't already for more camera, phone, photography, and videography content just like this one, and I'll see you in the next one.